Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be overviewing step three in the meta-analysis, specifically coding, which comes after step one, literature search, and step two, which is sorting articles. So I want you to go to this website, which you just saw in Google, and go to this web page. Um, this was created by the person who taught me meta-analysis, Dr. Peel Piers Steele at the University of Calgary. I mean, he's created this um, really, really useful Excel file that you can use. So you can download it here. I just wanted to show you that. Um, and I'm actually just going to get into the specifics of the file that I've actually already created. In this video, I'm not going to overview specifics of creating the um, database, but you can see here that I've created it. So the first column in coding information, you can enter the name of each coder that will be overviewing it as well as the articles that you would have already done in step one in your literature search. So what you want to do in this first column is just note anything of relevance in the article column here. Just note, just want to give you a bit of an overview of what's in this specific database. So you'll have a number of different categories that you can already have set up. Um, again, I'm not going to go through the specifics with you today, but you'll see here the active independent list that I'm interested in this study is organizational culture, specifically measured on the organizational culture and a number of different um, other relationships as well for dependent variables such as turnover, job satisfaction, commitment, leadership, so on and so forth. So I've already set this up um, because I've already started coding this specific file, but this is essentially what it looks like. Now in the actual file, you will be able to enter data using a really handy tool. Um, I personally prefer just using the data section of the file, so I'm going to go through that now. Later I'll show you how you can use um, Piers Steele's actual coding protocol on the first screen to enter all this in a little user bit of more user friendly way. So just note a number of different columns that I'm showing you here, population type, there's a number of different types here, po education level, sex ratio, this is men versus women in the favor of men are men, what country of origin is the sample from, what race is the sample from, here, there's a number of different things you can add, you can enter, um, what type of organization does this come from, is it across organizations or does it say come from manufacturing, self-report is pretty self-explanatory, it's going to usually self-report, type of organizational setting, is it across multiple organizations for a sample, is it a large organization, etc. Um, you'll also want to enter information such as dissertation. The relationship I am interested in here is organizational culture. I'll just flash it back to where you actually enter this information on your coding information page. So you'll see here, relationship one is culture, and those are all the variables. The same comes through on this end. Okay, so I have culture, attention to detail. Things that you're going to want to enter are this, such as the mean, standard deviation, scale, the internal consistency. In this column, you won't always have information. So in this specific column that you see here, I'm looking at this independent variable with another independent variable, but in some cases, I'm wanting to look at a dependent variable. So here in this specific column, you can see that I'm looking at leadership, whereas in these other columns, I'm looking at another independent variable, so I have nothing to really do with it. Okay, so the specific columns that you really want to note is um, BQ and BR, which are the raw intercorrelated variables, and then what those specific relationships are. So relationship one and relationship two are ICVAR1A and ICVAR1B. So in some cases, ICVAR1A will be an, always be an independent variable, but ICVAR-B will sometimes be an independent variable, and it will sometimes be a mediator, it will sometimes be a dependent variable. So just note that. All right, so now what I'm gonna get into is how you actually go about coding using this. So I have an example that I've pulled up here. What I'm going to want to do, first of all, is go to my first page where I have this article list saved. I'm just going to control F power because that's the author of this paper and just copy the specific reference into the article column there. Okay, 
right, I'm the one coding, so I'm going to enter my name there. Um, it's going to be incomplete, and I'm going to enter today's date. So once this is complete, I can always go back and change it later. As you can see above, um, I've changed one to complete. So I want to choose my variables of interest from my article. So if I just scroll through, I'm going to um, have something related to the organizational culture, one of my organizational culture variables, and um, some other dependent variables, but I'm really interested in the specific case. So let's just say I'm interested in aggressiveness here on productivity. Um, that's going to be one of the variables, but note the correlation table here has a number of different variables of interest that I'll eventually want to enter. I'm just going to show you one for this example. So for instance, one of the things I would want to set up is aggressiveness on productivity. I just use this study column just as a cue to myself for what I'm entering. I'm of course eventually going to want to enter all of these relationships, so I can just go through aggressiveness on role, aggressiveness on human capital, so on and so forth. Group productivity, yeah, group productivity, sorry. It's the next one that's on there. Um, also just change this back to individual productivity, so we have the contract here. And of course, I'm going to just want to keep going um, and enter every single relationship that you see here. So for instance, what I'm going to want to do is have the relationship between aggressiveness and productivity, job role, human capital, group productivity, TEQ, environmental. I'm also going to want the relationship between attention to detail and all of those variables, outcome on all of those variables, control on all those variables, etc, etc. Note that in this specific example, I don't have the relationship between the independent variables with each other. So for instance, I don't have the relationship between aggressiveness and attention to detail or aggressiveness and outcome. Um, so I'll have to eventually, after I'm done this, move this into the email folder and email the authors for that specific information, and hopefully they'll give it to me. Great, so in terms of entering the specifics, I'm just entering a year now. You don't need to worry about um, what's in lead or contact. You can leave those blank um, and a number of these as well. For sample number, a number of sample just becomes important if there's more than one sample in a specific paper. In this paper, I have two samples, one that's 68 and one that's um, around 150. So I'm going to just enter two, sample number two of two samples in this these two specific columns. And I know my sample is 156. Then I'm going to want to find out what my age group is. So I'm just going to go up to the method section and read through that so that I can have that information. So that's what I'm doing now is just trying to find if it's an adult sample. Usually if it's organizations you can just assume that it's adults and it's only that it's employees. Uh, but it's good to check just nevertheless. So adults and employees. Again reading through this section it doesn't mention anything about if they have a degree or not. And I've scrolled through um, previously all of this information so I'm just going to leave that blank. Sex ratio might be indicated, it might not. In favor of men here, I can see the percentage of men is 52%, so I'm just going to enter that in here. I'm going to want to scroll through and find out the sample. I can see that it's from Missouri, so I'm going to enter that. Usually, you might they might not report the race or ethnicity. In this case, they do. It's mainly Caucasian, but it's not all Caucasian, so I'm just going to put in brackets so that I can go back to this later, the specific percentage of Caucasians. Sometimes the organization will be one organization, sometimes it will be certain types of organizations, oftentimes it will be across organizations, and you can see in this study it's across many organizations. So what I'm going to enter for the other columns is across organizations. that I've like I've said it's usually going to be self-report we again have a cross organization you can see that there's some cases that that won't always be the case it's a dissertation I'm going to just skip through the other methods because I won't have any of those now I've come to my independent relation variable relationship independent one um, so again my variable of interest was aggressiveness and I can scroll back and double check that on this first column that I've decided to enter here, aggressiveness. 
Um, there's no type or anything there that you'll need to enter, so just put none. And then I'm going to want to add in my standard deviations for this specific relationship. Not always will they report this, um, but it's a good thing when people do, because you can do all kinds of testing associated with when you do have any standard deviations. So do enter it if it is provided to you, and you probably will need to scroll back and forth through the document to actually find this information. Okay, so I've just scrolled through and I have it here, I'm entering it for this variable. Now I'm gonna wanna find what the scale is. So usually that's in the methods rather than the results section. So you can scroll back and try to find it. Um, this one was a little bit more difficult to find, so you're gonna see me in a moment. I'm gonna continue on trying to find this specific range of the scale. Is it 1 to 7? It could be 1 to 5. It could be 1 to 9. There's a number of options and they should report it to you somewhere. So you can take a look. Read through the methods. This one isn't the right one. This is a different measure. Um, so I'm going to want to search specifically for my construct of interest rather than just assuming that it's 1 to 7. It's really important to do that because oftentimes in scales they'll um, measure things on all kinds of range of different scales. So one option could be to search 1 to 5, 1 to 7, 1 to 9, um, or you can just spend some time and just read through the specifics of what is going on in the method section. Because this is a thesis, it's a little bit longer. It's a little longer to read, so I'm just trying to quickly scroll through and find this information for you so that I can continue on for the video. And I'm not finding it here. Reading through one to nine, no, that's not what I want. Just scrolling through here to find it. Looking through. So I'm really not seeing it here. So one option if you can't find anything quickly and you want to continue on with your um, processing is just to leave it blank in the meantime and come back to it later. So I'm not going to spend any more time trying to find this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight the 1 to 7 box yellow and I'm also going to skip through alpha. Make sure that you um, do that as well. I'm going to skip through it just for the purposes of continuing on. So I'll just um, I'll just note to come back to those. So you can see a number of different dependent variables and independent variables in this list. Um, I'm not going to look at an, another independent variable for now because my call at the beginning, what I had done was I picked a dependent variable. So what I'm going to want to do is choose the relationship number two in here. I can take a look to see if I have performance in this list, and I do. If not, I could have added it on the previous screen, the coding information screen, but for now I'm just going to type it in. I also need to note, you know, what specific type of in independent variable, independent variable it is, which type of measure is it. So I can go back to my coding information screen if I haven't measured it already, entered something already to measure the specific one. This is just a. Um, if I look through the article, I know that this one was created by the researchers. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that that there's really nothing on here. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going through to see how they created this scale. Is it a validated scale that has been used a lot in previous research that they created themselves? Um, and you'll see in a moment, just reading through some of the information that they give you, that they created it for the purposes of this study. where you can see it designed for this study. So I'm just searching for that. Oh, I think it actually says 1 to 7 there. Anyway, so I'm just showing you here what's happening in coding information under performance if I have a unique 
them, but I don't. So I'm just going to type it in there. Unique individual performance. Just copy that and paste it into my dependent variable one. That will be none, dependent mean, you know, you enter all of this information in your habits. I already know that it's one to seven. So you can go back and look at that information alpha. I'm just going to skip through because I already showed you much of that information. So here, what you're really wanting to note is that you have your independent variable one, IC bar one A, IC bar one B, copy over B. I already know that I had our aggressiveness OCD. And what I'm wanting to enter now is the raw correlation between these two variables. You can just scroll through and try to find that information. So it's really important here that you use the correct variable names that you've used consistently in all of the coding, because that will be important for the analysis later. So just make sure, for instance, that you don't type in aggress as a shortcut or something along those lines. It's really important that you keep the variable name consistent with what you have on the coding information page. And again, and the reason for that is because it's really important to have consistent labels so that you can actually analyze. going to zoom in a bit so that you can actually see this, but basically you just need to enter aggressiveness of um, productivity, whatever the correlation is, and then go ahead and save. And that's really it. Uh, again, I skipped through some of these other relationships here, but they're pretty self-intuitive. So then you would just go through every relationship measured in this specific study would be relevant for you. So aggressiveness on role, aggressiveness on everything, the relationship between all of these variables would be independent variables. So it does take quite a lot of time to go through and enter and code these variables. So what I'm going to just show you now is what the um, actually created screen is that you can use if you choose to. That was created by um, Piers Steel in the coding sheet so that you don't have to manually enter all this information. I find that it's really quite slow so to enter it this way, so I prefer to use the Excel. Um, but you can enter it this way. So we went through all of this information in the coding information sh sheet here. It's basically the same, but you have this extra coding sheet. So what you would do is you would select who's coding, select your article. Um, again, that information is being pulled from the coding information screen. And just to enter all of the information here on this screen, the same way that you did when I was previously showing you on the Excel form. So the reliability, the region, age, population, internal consistency, the relationship with each variable. So in this case, emotions with avoidance, for instance. So enter everything there, mark it as complete. Um, make sure everything's complete, double check everything, press save. And then what will happen, it will, it will bring it into this data um, column here. Now you'll note that there's no information here now. The reason for that is because the way that I have this currently set up is for a Mac. So I'm currently working on a PC, so no matter what I do here, if I change it to another article, um, even if it's one that Rachel hadn't already done, for instance, where it's saving over it, if it's a brand new one at the bottom here, if I enter all of this information then press save, again, you'll see nothing's coming through. But um, if you do download the version from the website there, then it should allow you to do that and will automatically populate each column, each row, each column within your data. Now, even if I unhide, there's really nothing there. Okay, so essentially that's it for meta-analysis, step number three, how to code. Um, hopefully this gives you a little bit more tools to do so and happy coding.